We've got a personality training specialist right here with me. He is a doctor and he is a specialist and he is an opinion former in uh, the events that he would like to uh, talk to us on. Dr. Kumar Iddamalena, tell us about your vision and mission in life. That's a good question, Banu. Mm -hmm. Even recently the same question was asked. I'm going to give a little bit more, a uh, little different. Different, different answer today. That's exciting. Yes. I, in 1989, I can remember, when there were a lot of problems in the country, in Colombo, in the north, everywhere, I was in the university law faculty. Mm -hmm. We were about to pass out as law graduates. Then, that time, this evening, we meet friends and say, hi, bye, see you tomorrow. Following the morning, when we come back, they are not there to be seen. They are on a tire burning or dead and gone. We hear the news, they are no more. Then I went home one night like that and I wrote my mission statement. I thought sometimes universities were closed, open, closed, open, more closed than open. The open university also was closed. <laughs> Schools were closed. That time I thought this country is going to chaos from good to bad from bad to worse then I wrote a mission mission statement at that time my mission statement was I want to build the nation through practical education and innovative training to have a country with a community with health wealth wisdom happiness and peace when I wrote this, I never knew how to write a mission statement or vision statement. I never knew. Nobody taught me. I just wrote this because I thought there should be somebody doing something about what is happening in the university, around the university, in our lives, in the country. Of course, politicians are doing a lot of things, but then I did politics in the university. Then I was fed up in the first year itself. I gave it up and wrote this mission statement. It was too broad. I understood that later on only. Then I became a lawyer. I moved from the law profession to psychology with this mission statement. And from that day to now, I have been in it. Because you asked me about my mission. Yeah. Well, um, spearheading the event Destiny Day, how is that mission statement going along with that? I know it's been a long time that you've actually drew out what you want to be. That's a long-term objective. Do you think that you've succeeded today with this kind of event mm. that's going to be taking place on a huge scale? Yes, of course, because when I started, I had a big mission. Mm -hmm. And by today, I have achieved at least 60% of it. When I said I, I set the personality training field in this country, I did public rallies about it. I did television programs on that. I made awareness campaigns for people to understand what personnel training is all about and then what they can do through that. So today there are so many trainers who have come behind me and then doing what, trying to do what I am doing, I am happy so that I have achieved partly. Then Destiny Day is a very special creation of mine. I created this with, with this particular program because of one unique reason. The reason is, I have been trying to open up people's minds to say that you have the power. It's in you. If you we have seen my photographs in the paper or anywhere else in website or anywhere, I have an action like this, which says... It's within you. It is within you. It's in you. It's mm -hmm. all in you. We have been showing people that you, you have it. Your destiny today is, is what you are doing or what you have done before or in other words, simply your result today are the results of your actions in the past. So, if, um, do you mean to say that destiny and hard work are very much correlated? Destiny and hard work, of course for some people destiny is created by hard work. So, some people, destiny is created by smart work. Now, you don't have to always work hard, but work smart, also you can create your destiny. But when you say destiny, today is destiny, what you have got today, what you have 
as your results, what you are doing, what frustrations you have, what sort of problems you are going through, what sort of things you are suffering from, all that is your destiny. At the same time, on the positive side, what you have got, your car, the house, your qualifications, your salary you receive, the money you have collected, the wealth, all that is your destiny today. So it may, it may have come from hard work or smart work, it's your destiny. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is all that you have today is not controlled by an external force. What I mean is not, not something like, not based on a star, not based on a horoscope or something like that. It is here. If you understand what's your talent, what's your weakness, what's your potential, what is in you and then decide what you want to do in the future, what you want to get, what you want to have, what you want to be and then identify, okay, what should I do to get there? What's my real action or the unique action or specific identified action to go there? Then you do that action, take that action, then you will go there. Then you create a new destiny from the today's destiny to a new destiny. But having said that, you have a studied Reiki and palm reading and astrological perspectives. You, from the answer that you gave, it, it's quite clear cut that you do not believe in any of those. Why? I would say I learned astrology a little bit only when I was a child. Mm -hmm. I think grade 10 or somewhere. I'm not an expert of astrology. Palm reading I learned a bit. Then Reiki I have learned well some time back. Reiki, you can't compare with this. Reiki is also some healing process. Okay. There is some something in it. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in these people believing that your destiny is created by somebody outside or something outside, some reason outside. For example, somebody believes that this tree has some God or some force which can help to create my destiny. Or somebody will believe that plant will create my destiny. Or somebody will say that far away star can create my destiny. I don't believe in that. I believe your destiny I, or your result is created by your actions. That's why I introduced actionology, a new subject I introduced to say people, understand your problem, understand where the problem is coming from or the root cause, yeah. and then find out what you really want, then take action. Then you create a destiny. So on that note, can any person of any caliber set out on a smart objective, a realistic objective on a specific time scale and be like, you know what, I'm going to really work for it and then achieve it? If you say, Brown, if you say smart objectives, yes, then at the same time you need to know who this person is. Like uh, this person can be a psychic person, is this person can be a semi-psychic person, that person can be normal or abnormal. So when you are setting goals, when you say realistic, yeah. realistic to that particular person, mm -hmm. therefore goal setting has to be always done with clear understanding and deeper level of understanding. Then it can be smart, merely because you say smart goals, like we know uh, we do a specific measurable, attainable, yeah. relevant, trackable and all that. There are more than that also when you come to goal setting, some other rules like PC, C, Priva rule of goal setting, etc. So, of course, if you follow these rules of goal setting and somebody set the goals according to those, mm -hmm. then those are achievable. Goals have to be always achievable. All right. Um, how far can a person change his attitude or behavior in order to suit the real world? That's a real a serious question, Baron, you're asking. A person can change the attitude as far as you have a need to change it. If somebody doesn't want to change it, you cannot change it. The reason is your attitude is based inside your brain and people's behavior, anybody's behavior is created with the mental states that person has. Mental states are created with the beliefs, the values, memories of that particular person. If that person's belief cell is memories, those are called brain filters, mm -hmm. then if you, I would try to tra change a person's behavior, but then my talk, my information that I give you or the particular person will go clash with the attitude, belief, then memories, values of that particular person. So if that person is not ready to change, 
till that person is ready, mm -hmm. it will be very difficult for him to change his behavior because what I am trying to give, he has his internal brain filters which come and clash with my idea and then if I am not forceful enough to give something new to his brain, yeah. then his mental state won't change. That means his behavior would not change. So in other words, there is no mutual understanding, is it? The there is, uh, say. when I say mutual understanding, there is no mm -hmm. filtering through the brain filters okay. to get to the mental state. That is why like we trainers okay. learn various methodologies how to go in to get through that. To, to get through that exact okay. word is to get through that those filters and then influence that person then to create a new mental state because you have a new mental state then you can create a new behavior state then with the be new behavior state you get new results in life okay so is this a good way of uh, overcoming depression when you say depression and it's an overloaded word it's, o it's an overloaded yes. word because as a doctor treating mental patients uh, I should say you have to categorize people into psych psychic, psychotic, the neurotic, psychologically sick and like semi-levels yeah. then not so psychologically sick but then having psychological defects, psychological disorders, so various categories. Therefore, when you say that we, when you talk about goal setting or destiny or getting results etc., we have to clearly understand that a psychologically sick person, mm -hmm. mentally sick person has to be treated with, men, with medicines or treatments or prescriptions which are suitable to that person. It's not training or it's not teaching that can help that person. We have to look at that person as… as but I guess it depends from person to person. person because well. you asked about the depression. Yeah. Depression immediately when you say it's not a normal person, yeah. it's depressed. Therefore, we have to go deeper into his problem mm -hmm. and then see whether you can follow this model and solve. Of course, this model will work, but then before that, you have to get that person out of depression. Yeah. Sometimes some people are deeply depressed, but not psychologically seriously sick or psychological patient, but depressed. Asking three questions, if we can enhance that person's cognition, cognition means the level of understanding, suddenly that person comes out of depression. So it can happen, but seriously mentally sick, mental patient, it will not be possible. But of course, depends on the level. All right, it's it's a huge answer to process actually, but it takes time and uh, it's a very thoughtful uh, commitment, I think, uh, which has to be given to all the uh, people out there as well. So tell us a little bit more about the training and consultations you have undergone in psychology management, leadership, personality various segments, various industries that you've taken part. Any Anything that you would like to share on with us on the show? I'm a little bit of a crazy person in that way when you say, when I say, when you ask me that question because I can't be satisfied by doing one thing. Because if, when I learn one methodology or one thing mm -hmm. and then I go, I go and try to apply it on people, I see a person who doesn't answer to that model or methodology that I follow. I see what's your problem. Then I try to follow the tool or the technique that I have learned. Then that doesn't work on him. Then I go find, I spend any amount of money, I go finding whether there is any other method which I can solve this problem easily. Then I learn some other thing. In that process, I have learned neuro linguistic programming methodologies and mind muscle vibration therapy models, brain dynamic models, and brain waves, alpha dynamics, various things like Reiki you mentioned earlier then yoga therapy, naturopathy, various places in the world, various countries at different times. Till to date, all the last two decades I have been doing this. So it is a very, very long topic List. to talk about. Yes. Thank you so much for making the studios on Good Morning Sri Lanka. It's been a terrific blast for all of us.